Last week, Mr Speaker, the House voted by 299 to zero to pause the rollout of universal credit. Will the Prime Minister respect the will of the House? We acknowledge the fact that there are concerns people have raised with universal credit. That is why, as we have been rolling it out, we have been listening to those and changes have been made. I am happy to talk about what happened under Labour. Well, let us think about what happened when the Labour Party rushed to introduce tax credits. I was not the only member of Parliament in this House who had people in my constituency surgery who had filled the forms improperly, who had given their information to the authorities, and then years later the Government came back and landed them with bills for thousands of pounds. That is what happens when you rush into a system rather than introducing it properly as we are. Mr Speaker, I thought we passed the threshold last week when the Prime Minister was going to answer questions, but we obviously not, haven't achieved that yet. <laughs> Mr Speaker, my question is this. Will the budget in November put the onus back onto employers to pay a decent wage so that workers can make ends meet? The right hon. Gentleman says that he didn't want that the welfare system wasn't created to subsidise employers who are paying low wages. That's exactly what Labour's working tax credit system did. Mr Speaker, this government doesn't really know whether it's coming or going. They say <coughs> the Conservative Party and the government says they have full confidence in universal credit, but won't vote for it. They say they will end the NHS pay cut, but won't allocate any money to pay for it. The Community Secretary backs £50 billion of borrowing on housing, but the Chancellor says it's not policy. The Brexit Secretary says they're planning for a no-deal Brexit. The Chancellor says they're not. Isn't the case, Mr Speaker, this Government is weak? Incompetent, divided, and unable, unable to take a decision. For order, order, and unable to take the essential decisions necessary for the good of the people of this country. Of course, we want to see people earning higher wages, but the way to do that is to build and continue to build that stronger economy. And you don't build a stronger economy by losing control of public finances. You don't build a stronger economy by uncontrolled borrowing. You don't build a stronger economy by hitting people with the highest taxes in our peacetime history. You don't build a stronger economy by voting against progress in our Brexit negotiations. You don't build a stronger economy by planning for capital flight and a run on the pound. That's what Labour would do, and we will never let it happen.